astronomer is really quite varied. Uh, I do lots of things like supervise students, uh, attend many meetings uh, and write scientific papers. But I think forever my favourite days are going to be those where I'm using a radio telescope, perhaps even across the other side of the world, uh, mapping parts of our galaxy and trying to figure out things like how do big stars form, what does our galaxy look like. Radio astronomy research for me looks at the biggest questions in science and the most fundamental questions about the nature of our universe. For example, the SKA telescopes will be used to study pulsars in order to test Einstein's theory of relativity. They will be used to understand the nature of dark matter and dark energy. They will look back to the beginning of the universe to understand how the first stars and galaxies formed and you never know, they may even be able to detect life beyond our own planet. There are two main ways that astronomers generally design uh, their scientific experiments. The first is if uh, they're looking at, at their favourite kind of object, and so that could be something like Orion or the centre of our own galaxy. And they're trying to get at the really fine detail of what's going on in those particular objects. The second way is where we search large sections of the sky and there we might be trying to work out how a population of objects have evolved, so for example how stars form, but that second case also gives us an opportunity to detect things that we had no idea were there in the first place. The SKA will look back over 13 billion years into the universe's history. We call this early time the cosmic dawn and it's when the first stars started to produce light. Yes, the SKA will have to worry about the noise created um, from, from man-made radio sources. So a great example of this is your mobile telephone. Um, it creates really strong radio signals and in fact if you were using your mobile telephone on Mars the SKA telescopes would be able to detect that really easily and sometimes it would even be the brightest thing that it could see in the sky. This is one of the reasons why we build our radio telescopes in quite remote locations, um, far from cities uh, and things like those mobile telephones. Satellite mega constellations do have the potential to impact on radio astronomy. Specifically at the SKAO, the impact would be felt on the frequencies of light that we will use to observe complex molecules in space. Now, these complex molecules could be signatures of life beyond our own planet, so we're really keen to preserve those observations. And that's why we're working on lots of mitigation strategies to reduce the impact. of the SKA is highly dependent on the frequency that you observe at. So at low frequencies you can see quite a large patch of the sky at once and it decreases slightly as you go up in frequency. So as an example, if you're observing with our low telescope around 100 megahertz, you might be able to see 20 square degrees on the sky, which is roughly 100 times the area of the full moon. One of the advantages of having such a big field of view is that you have the opportunity to detect rare things uh, as they happen. So that could be a really brief flash of strong radio wavelengths from something like a fast radio burst. It's a really exciting time at the SKAO. We've just started construction, uh, but it's going to take us a little while to build up enough antennas on the ground to start doing scientific observations. We expect to start doing that with the community in the next few years, uh, building up to full operations towards the end of the decade. If you're looking to study SKA science, the best places to apply for your PhD will be places with strong track records of radio astronomy research, particularly institutions inside the SKA member countries. The SKA is going to give a great boost in the search for extraterrestrial life. If there are other civilizations out there, we'll be able to detect the noise that they create in communicating with each other um, with the SKA telescopes. Uh, there's also uh, the potential that these other worlds are so advanced that they're trying to communicate with us on purpose and sending signals in our direction. Um, those would be fairly easy for us to detect. Um, 
The great thing about the SKA is that we've designed the system to be really flexible and that means that we can do these kinds of observations alongside other scientific investigations.